today we're talking about mastering stress and avoiding burnout. What do you think about that? Mastering stress and burnout, especially in business, right? Uh, very, very challenging. This is a big conversation that's happening everywhere at the moment. And I think there's some key things that everyone needs to understand, especially if you want to get into business. Uh, managing stress in business, um, there's so many different categories. I think it's a couple of key things that you probably would need to understand about it is to have a good group of people around you. I think most entrepreneurs do, which is great. Being at the top can be pretty lonely. You need someone to talk to, whether it's your partner or whether it's just uh, siblings or a friendship group, right? Or even a mentor. But the thing I know about men is men don't normally talk to their wives or their girlfriends about it. <laughs> you know, they don't want to be the center of negativity and, and taking that stuff home, right? But there is an adage that I always think about, if you're not happy at home, you're not happy. And if you can't be happy at home, business is even harder. You probably want to try and overcome that if you can. I think talking to your partner and having good friends around you and good people around you to be able to shoot the breeze uh, and de decompress uh, at the end of a busy week or, or uh, even a busy day or a busy month, right? Uh, I, I think is really important. Having a business, being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, it's gotta be super stressful. Um, how do you recognize stress and how do you deal with stress? Business can be brutal. I actually think, what's the number? I think maybe 3% of entrepreneurs are successful, right? Um, and there's a reason for that. And, and it's, it's stress and it's pressure um, because it can be pretty brutal. And I don't think many people are born to be able to handle it, I'll be honest with you. But that said, if you are up for the challenge, you need to understand a couple of things. The first thing is that understand that it's going to be hard. Going into business is not going to be easy. And I'm not just talking about financial management and financial stress. I'm talking about emotional stress, right? You know, it comes from being tired or the hours that you have to work or the jobs that you have to do. Financial stress on yourself and your family. Uh, there's physical stress on yourself. And then there's mental and psychology, uh, psychological stress, right? Like, um, and there's, so there's all these different categories. I think they're the three main ones for me and I think you just need to to break them down iterate and just sort of think about what you attack first now you might not be the person that stresses out in that first 12 months of business but it does come eventually if you're building a small business around a couple hundred thousand dollars a year look that's probably uh, relatively easy compared to if you're looking to build a 25 million dollar business but you know you've raised funds and you you've got shareholders that are a part of that process that can also be pretty difficult you know you've got to pitch and catch it uh, and I think just be conscious of it and the different stages that it will normally happen will happen at home first. But that said, uh, business can also be pretty great. Um, so you've got to be pretty strong and pretty resilient. Sometimes you've got to take off your poopy pants, um, as David Goggin says, and you just got to get on with it. And sometimes when you do that, you know, it all sort of works out uh, and it's all okay. There's days that are hard and there's days that are amazing. Uh, you just got to remember that it's going to be a difficult journey. And if you're honest with yourself at the start, when that hits you, when that comes at you, oh, that's why I remember this was going to happen. And it's just a little bit easier to contend with, I think. And isn't it true that there is good stress and bad stress? I don't think we should demonize just the word stress itself. So what do you think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and I think people use the word stress quite generically across everything, right? Oh, I'm really stressed out. Yeah, but, but specifically what, right? So I think there is good stress and bad stress. I think there's stress on your day-to-day -day practical activities in a business, right? You know, something didn't go your way, you lost a deal, the printer's not working, you know, the internet went down. Like, so there's a little bit of stress. Those are all small practical things, I think. There's the big things, right? Um, and these things can really hurt. It can be financial pressure. That's normally the first thing that comes into play, especially with a startup business. Or you're burning cash uh, and you don't have any money in your account and you have wages to pay and a family to support. That's one of the things that really hurts. We have to work 100 hours a week for 12 months, if not longer. You know, I think I probably work longer than 12 months than 100 hours a week. When physically you start to get tired, uh, you don't want to admit it to anybody, you know because you're the strong, strong man that you want everyone to see. Uh, and it comes down on top of you and you start to segregate yourself out from people and, and try to manage it on your own. So that's the really hard stuff. The easy stuff is the day-to-day. -day. The hard stuff is normally financial. That's where it starts. Then you get inside your own head. Uh, you get tired. And that word stress um, and anxiety starts to take hold, right? Has there been any time where it's almost derailed you? And like, how did you manage to overcome it? Stress. <laughs> I think it derails everyone at some stage, right? Like, well, there's lots of stories on. I could talk about a lot of stories about um, failure. So I've failed, failed quite a bit. And I've had failed relationships that I regret. And I've had I've failed businesses that I regret. By the way, I've said this before. I think we're all going to have regrets and that's okay. So I sort of accept that up front. I know at some stage I'm going to fail. So I sort of go into it with a mindset that I expect to fail. And if I win, well, then I'm better off, right? So I lower the expectations of that, which is around me. And I lift the expectations for myself personally. I also have this belief system. I, I choose to believe in that what serves me, whether it's true or not. I like to wrap certain things around um, my life 
life and myself personally that sort of keep me sort of strong and stoic right so that that's that's a, a little bit of a weapon that that i can call on when i need it have i been derailed yeah i think i have i had a business um it was a it was an education college in india um i got an opportunity to, to work on an investment with a couple of people uh, and i decided to invest uh, in that business uh, it was a lot of money uh, at the time our catchment area was about uh, 247 million people right so it was a big deal it was a, a, a lot of money involved the business partnership sometimes start to shake uh, anyway uh, things move forward uh, and then we get hit by a global pandemic and the government shut the business down uh, and never reopened it uh, and we lost uh, a lot of money millions of dollars right so those things can sort of derail you to a point you know because it's really only your your emotional stability and strength that get, that get you through that said there's a lesson in that right i think uh, for every negative thing and bad thing that happens in your life there should be a civil line and we should at least look for that that pushed me into another market i met an, i met another person I learned some more things and ended up setting up a company probably in a better market. That's uh, a company that we have today. When you get derailed, and you do, that it can only be, you know, it's sort of temporary when you think about it. It doesn't have to be forever. You just got to rebuild, right? Um, which is difficult. It takes time. But again, it goes back to the first thing I said at the entry of this video is have good people around you uh, who support you, the ones who have got your back. What are some habits and routines that you could mention or to maybe teach somebody to, uh, you know, implement in your daily life to overcome and, you know, mitigate stress? Go to the gym. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I think you have to keep the body and the mind healthy, right? It really decompresses me a lot. And it makes you feel good, right? Uh, and it makes you look good and you feel good. I can't be depressed and stressed when I'm working out. It's just impossible. Uh, I just feel good when I'm doing it right. So get off the couch, get away from Netflix, put down the corn chips and get to the gym. So I want to stay regular with that. I think looking after your health in general, whether it be, you know, doing a cold plunge, a hot plunge, red light saunas, uh, walks, runs, whatever your thing is, uh, you should maintain that with consistency. I think that's probably the first and most important thing to me because unhealthy, lazy people cannot be successful. I just want to have a strong mindset. So the other one I have is the obstacle is away. And I, tr I truly believe in that. That's probably one of the most important phrases of my lifetime because it's really kept me afloat, right? And the other thing is just being mentally strong. You know, and how do you do that? Well, I did it through reading. But by the way, I'm not a great reader. I never have been, but I do it because I know that there's knowledge in books, right? If there's something that I don't know, I know that there's been someone before me who's walked that path who does know and probably written something about it. So I go and look for that knowledge. I read it and then I write it down and then I retain it and then I execute against it because we are a byproduct of how we think. How do you deal with stress? Like what are the mental techniques that you have to keep calm and focused in those very hard to handle situations. It's much of a muchness, right? It's sort of all the same to me. Don't overcomplicate it. I keep it very simple. Whether you want to call it affirmations, whether you want to call it knowledge, wh whatever it may be. If I'm having a bad call with a client or a bad pitch, right? With a board or, or you know, a group of people, here's the thing, no one's going to die. It's just going to be okay. You know what I mean? So if you make a mistake, it's fine. If you have a bad day, it's fine. If someone cuts you off in track it, traffic and gives you the finger, it's just going to be okay. It's how you perceive it and then what you say to yourself after that event occurs is the problem. Like my goal is if something happens to me in business and I'm super stressed out, how fast can I get over it? My goal is I want to get over it in three seconds. I want to get over it in three seconds so I have a routine and I say to myself and it's no one's going to die. And then I count and then I'm on to my next thing. But then again, I mean, you don't really live at the company, so how do you balance personal life and business to like minimize stress? Because it's got to be super stressful being here and then come home and then deal with other problems. Like, how do you not yeah. intermingle that? Like, how do you deal with that? It depends on what you want, right? I always think about, okay, how, how do you manage yourself in an environment where you need to have balance? And I've never been able to master balance, I'll be honest with you. I think it's pretty difficult. And I've got two daughters, like spending time with them and then spending time with the business to ensure the business has enough foundation and intelligence in it to move forward and be successful, um, which normally requires the founder to do so, which is, that's what I am. And then you become the CEO, the marketing manager, the sales manager, the sales agent, uh, the HR person, uh, and the cleaner all at once, right? And it's very difficult. Awareness would probably be what I would say, is just be aware of it. Uh, and again, have good people around you, get them to talk to you about it. Maybe some practical things you could do is that, look, I'm, I'm gonna work in the business X amount of hours, and you just need to lock that down. So ensure that you're getting home at a good time. And at the end of the day, the, if you built the business on you having to work 100 hours, this would be my mistake, by the way, that might be the wrong decision. Reflection, you know, having a business partner, I think could have taken some of that pressure off and you're gonna have vacations every year. 
Um, but you know, that first two or three years, uh, you gotta go all in, you know, um, uh, and take those poopy pants off and just get it done, right? Um, do you have an Apple Watch? I don't, no. There's an app on it where it tells you every hour to stand up, breathe, take it easy, stretch, all these things, right? Because we're yep. living in such a stressful situation, yep. you know, the times. Yeah. What are some tools and technologies that you use to manage stress? Yeah, so I have this watch. This watch, by the way, um, I bought this watch on my first commission check when I had a sales job. Because I think although, I think technology can be a distraction, so, and I think it can be the cause of the stress. I'm not big on it, I'll be honest with you. Um, I use it as a tool uh, to make myself efficient. Uh, you need time away from um, all the technology and all the tools um, to decompress and think. You know, spending time on your own um, in a quiet space to contemplate and to think about things that are important to you uh, uh, what's gone wrong, what could you have done better. Spend some time with a loved one, with your partner, with your wife, with your husband, uh, and really just get off, off the distraction trail of mobile phones. And I think there's more power in that, more control in that, that makes humans more efficient in the 21st century than there ever has been. Because I think technology is starting to influence human beings in a way that distracts them from what's core, right? I'm not saying technology is bad, I think it's great. You know, I bring on the cyborgs and the AI robots, I say, but um, but there has to be some separation from it because um, uh, humans are emotional. We're, we're totally emotional, right? So, and we can get pent up and we can get tied in knots, but I think uh, removing yourself from all of that distraction and all the tools and all that sort of stuff, I think helps. And just a follow-up question, like if there is a pressing issue, a lot of people get stressed about that, right? It can be debt, it can be, a, you know, a client, it can be something yep. else, right? Yeah. Do you face it? Do you tackle it right away? Or do you let it like sit and then tackle it later? Or, or do you choose to just ignore it? I put everything through uh, a risk matrices, right? It's like, okay, does this need to be dealt with immediately or can it wait? Um, so you've really got to categorize it first and put it in the right spot. Um, uh, I always think in terms of risk from one to five. That's just sort of how I see things. If it's low risk, I don't, I don't ever deal with it straight away because I think you need to sleep on things and give it some space to be able to see it with any clarity. By the way, when the human's really emotional, we make bad decisions, you know what I mean? When, when we're drunk and we have too much alcohol in our system, we make bad decisions. So if it's an instance where you're stressed out, uh, you have to give it time, you know, let your frontal cortex uh, calm down a little bit and, and think about it. I always feel better when I sleep on something. I, see, I always see it differently in the morning. I've never made a good decision when I've been stressed out, ever. And I've sometimes said the wrong thing to people when I'm stressed out. So I'm very cautious about reacting. I never do it anymore, ever. I've been called reactive though, uh, reacting to stressful situations. But I'm doing so because I'm so experienced at it and I've just been through it so much. Some people may seem like I'm stressed about it. I'm actually not. I just sometimes need people to listen and to execute. So, But my advice overall, um, go slow, don't react, sleep on it or give it an hour um, and step away from it before you can, I think, make a good decision. We're shooting a YouTube video right now and yep. a lot of you know creators on YouTube these days talk about the word burnout. You know, like it's kind of a buzzword these days, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think about burnout and entrepreneurs and how do you recover from it? I think burnout is psychological and it's a mindset and a belief system. Uh, I know guys that burn out all the time who really don't do much. I know guys who have achieved a lot and have never burnt out. I think burnout can be a word that people use to give themselves an excuse for treating people poorly, for not achieving what they need to, uh, for breaking the P&L. Uh, normally it's just stress. You know, they're stressed out for a reason because they couldn't decompress on something, they'd be making bad decisions. Here's the thing about stress, here's what I know. If you're being hyper successful and the world, the world is great and you are not stressed out, you're normally stressed when you're failing at something. If I'm stressing out, it's because something is not going my way. Or is it the perception that something is not going my way? People say they're burning out because they're losing and they're failing. And normally it's because they were being successful and now they're not. Now that said, and I don't mean to contradict myself, but as you get older, it changes. Uh, you're a young entrepreneur. Oh man, you should run and break things for sure. A hundred percent you should do that. And in fact, you should do it for your 20s and your 30s. But when you get older and in your 40s, you start to realize that, um, it's not all about that. I don't think I've ever burned out. I think I stress out. I think I would stress out when, you know, you lose a few million dollars in a business venture that goes south on you. But I wasn't burnt out about it. I think burning, burning out means that I can't do this any longer.
could you just recap how can people deal with stress? Like, like what are the best ways of dealing with stress? Like the top three tips, basically. Well, for me, it's pretty easy. The first thing I do is keep your health on point. I think that's critical. Um, keep your health on point. I think you need to educate yourself continually about it, right? Because um, normally when you're stressing, something is not going your way. So it's really the perception on how you see it and then what you say to yourself. And the third thing is, is you need to find areas of calmness, right? Um, get away from it, uh, at whichever way you can, so mentally and physically. I think if you can get away from a problem physically, mentally you can, uh, you can subtract from it as well, because it's always gonna be there tomorrow. It's gonna be there next week, uh, and you can live to fight another day.